Jerry here with the floaty dart base again. Sort of the uh, last revision of this design. Uh, I noticed after doing repairs last time that I'd actually lost a couple of relays, which of course turns off half of a bank of darts. So I've caged the whole thing in bars to stop the cops from spitting if they can see you. I mean, they'll still spit, but it'll hit the bars instead of the fragile electronics, at least until they're inside. Yeah. There are ways that this could be fixed. This kind of a design, you know, didn't start this way. There are certainly things I do differently. Uh, I've added the corner traps, the dart traps. Because of the cabling distance, I could not get a tripwire behind them, so I've only done head height and the tripwire in front. It does mean you now have this complete wiring disaster. Purple is all tripwires. Blue is electric fences I added to this outside rung. It was one of the things I was thinking of to stop the zombies that were doing this. Problem, of course, is in the corners, there's nothing but fence. There's no dart traps hitting here, which I suspect will lead to the fences breaking pretty early in the horde from reflected damage. You know, anything that gets stunned and just stands here is going to keep ticking damage back to the fence post because nothing is killing them. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, all the wiring for the banks is still the same which is you have a trigger side that looks like this, which is power coming into the tripwire post, post runs across, and then on the receiving side you can see you know, the direction of the color. Uh, you have this powering the dart traps near it, and then up to a relay that goes across and powers the far ones. Uh, corners are wired the same way, except of course it's only a single trap. Um, when they're rotated that way, they do stick out half a block, as you can see here. You can actually even get it to interact with you sometimes. So you need to cover it with something that's at least a half block thick. These are the wedge stairs. You got wedge tips rotated this way. You got wedge tips rotated this way. And then just a regular half block. So there are many ways you could do it. You could even just make the outside pillars Know, double thick to add extra support. Uh, I would, I think, if I were building this for real to make it look nice and all that, probably float another wall like two or three out and then enclose the whole thing, make it like that look like the outside wall of the structure, do all of your wiring and the layers in between so that they are protected and not nearly as visible. Uh, that is this design where the inside corner is 13 by 13. I would never recommend it. Wiring it is incredibly difficult because these are the max distance. You can see again in the corners I've had to wire the tripwires inside instead of outside because they it's just too far. And some of these, it's, and it's interestingly not consistent, like this side wired across fine, but this side it just won't reach. You actually have to break the top dart trap on both sides to be able to see enough to wire it. So it'd be kind of a pain in the butt, but it, it does it would in theory let you do a five by five up here and lots and lots of traps so i don't know maybe i'll continue that and see where it takes us someday but uh i did because of the number of traps over here have to add another generator not a big deal since i was just you know all the power is this outer ring i just split that half onto a different generator i've also added two regular auto turrets gives you something to do with that nine millimeter ammo is just get rid of the vultures let's see how it works uh, these are providing structure so i can stack generators but also hopefully stopping the turret from shooting the generators uh, we'll see if i can actually reach both of them from here looks like top one and bottom one so there you go that's uh, the current setup I did move the uh, the lights downstairs in one because I need that relay you can actually see one of the wires going to it and like I said if I was doing this for real like in a base you want to look nice maybe actually live and work in I would definitely look at some other way to do the wiring. Maybe dig a couple down and make a basement for everything to go under there. Or, like I said, an entire another structure, like float another wall two or three out, make that a solid box. 
do all of your wiring and the layers in between. I mean, you'd lose the ability to shoot at stuff that's coming in, but you'd still have the ability to protect your pillars, you know, shooting this way. So, I don't know. It's just one of those things to take into consideration. And let's see. Is it 28? It is. So it looks like we're on game stage 363. Oh, there they are. So they're different. Oh, and you can hear something shooting already, so must have a vulture. Looks like they were coming from that side. And the one nice thing about that fence is, in theory, that's actually stopping them at headshot height. So we'll see what that does for us. Seems like it's really effective so far. I mean, look at all those radiators just... Falling right down for us. <laughs> Flying spiders, nice. Oh yeah, it definitely takes those radiateds down quicker, but I also suspect that that's doing a lot of damage to the fence posts, so they will not last the night. So uh, one of the things I wish we had added, uh, and of course you, you can definitely mod this in, uh, I did have some problems trying to mod fences, but I think if you tampered with the default ones or made one that extended the default block, but another tier, like a steel upgraded tier of electric fence that just has more health so that the reflected damage doesn't kill it as fast. But I mean, those fences definitely change where they're dying. I mean, you notice most of them are not actually making, making it up to the top here. There's one looping out to a pillar and back. But I suspect if I can keep the relays from breaking, that'll keep all the dart traps active through the night, which will also help. Because like I said, at some point during the last court test, I lost a bank of them and didn't even notice. But yeah, this is just a, a massacre here. But again, we're only in game stage 300. Maybe after seeing how long these dark traps last, I'll bump this up to a real game stage. You know, maybe three or four thousand and see what this would look like late game. But see what I mean? She's on a corner and not getting hit by darts, so she's just standing in the fence, and that's reflecting just a ton of damage back to the fence posts. Anyone else? Yeah, that can't be all of them. Oh, there's cop. Yeah, see, see all the cop damage, even though I broke line of sight. That would be where your interactive part comes in. I mean, if you stay out of visibility, the cops are fine, but if they see you, or if you want to take part in shooting some stuff, cops are where it's at, because they're the ones that are going to do damage. Like, that cop hit all up into here. There's actually a relay over here somewhere, so we may already have lost a bank of darts. It looks like that relay is okay. I do see them all shooting. Yeah, so that bank's okay still. They do take them down. I mean, that's a pretty big cop there to get enough dark traps across a single block. And yeah, it's just mowing those. The regular cops are just toast. But even that radiated cop died pretty quick. That is one thing that the fences are, are good for, is it'll give you a chance to Get that cop stunned, get some headshots on him before he starts spitting. And of course, if you uh, design this, like this design, if you built it with this in mind, move the electronics out of that fighting area so they're not at as big a risk, then you could make like a 3x3 three three shooting opening instead of this little single opening, and that would give you much more time 
to line up on guys coming from out there, you know, shoot some explosive crossbow bolts out there. And of course, it is designed so that you can actually just come out here and make a mess of things if you want. But look at all those cops, and they're all going to spit at the base right now. And that's just a, a ton of damage. A ton of damage you don't want, you don't need. Kind of ammo usage. I mean, it's fun. You don't want to be as bored, or maybe you want to soak up some experience or something. But it, it it is just the truth of it that that's where like 99% of the base damage is going to come from. So if you avoid the cops, if this viewport didn't exist at all, and I just, or if I just stood over here in the corner, I probably wouldn't have any base damage. I mean, I'd have fence damage from reflected. And I'd have to replace a couple of thousand iron darts. And, oh, and some fuel. And dogs and spiders are why I want the, the low tripwire down low and a low level of darts so that you can get those targets. Because they tend to be kind of obnoxious, they bounce around in weird ways. You know, if you have tripwires up at head height and only darts at head height, you just, you don't kill that stuff, I want it dead. You just spit at me. See, he was actually swinging at the zombie in front of him because it was in his way, which is pretty funny. Yeah, the dart traps are, are uh, I mean, the electric fences are actually surprisingly effective at stopping them at head height. Like, I almost wonder if you could just do this without the top row at all. Just have that bottom row fences so that you're doing your headshots before they even get up here. I mean, see, some of them are getting up here, and some of the cops have gotten up here. But it's pretty darn effective with those fences. You can see they're still doing the weird AI where they run out underneath the pillar, but so long as there is an opening, you know, as long as they think that they can path here to get closer to me, even though it's not an effective path, they should run out to the pillar, fail to find a block they can reach, and then realize, oh, this path is open again, I'm going to come over here and get closer. And they just loop back and forth. So this is completely abusing the AI. You know, call it whatever you want. I, I like to think that in an apocalypse survival scenario, the reason humans would survive is because we're smarter than zombies. But, you know, some people don't seem to agree with that. And there you go. That's uh, stage three. So that is a Blood Moon Horde completely cleared. So, did not use much fuel there. I don't know which one I'm looking at. It's kind of a problem of stacking them like this. Yeah, so 30 in one and 15 in the other. Which is not too bad at all. Oh, I do see a vulture that did not get turreted down. must have been coming either down low or they just never got close enough. I don't know. I mean, I heard the turrets go off early once. Anyway, uh, let's see. So, nothing out here. Took any damage. Yeah, so, there you go. That's one. And it was 100 even, so that's kind of an odd thing. That was damaged. Oh, I bet this was... Yeah, this was that cop. So... Again, this is why I say standing around on the outside edge, screwing around is where you're you're going to see all your damage. It's all going to be cop damage, and it's with this change all going to be concentrated outside, but not entirely because you can see some of those took splash damage. None of the okay, that dart trap took one, so that was not a cop. That was me. But the platform itself. 
stuck a land claim in the middle there. Huh, there's a dead, not dead dog. But none of this took any damage. And that's probably me shooting. But all of the structural blocks, these guys, all perfectly fine. All the outside blocks, except for the cops that I saw over here. You can see that did hit a couple of... Like the ladder got hit, bars got hit, and this is why I say the cops are the problem. And if you were doing this for real, I would want something further out to protect everything out here so that there's just a layer of stuff cops can break without impacting function. Uh, looks like the relays are all okay. It took a hit here, but it was close enough that it didn't. That's enough damage to probably me missed me missing it last time. But as long as it's focused in the center, none of the relays went down, none of the dart traps really got hurt, and they were all fully loaded. So these, this level on both sides should be the same. So. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's a lot of darts. I mean, that's going to be, like, 500 per row here. But darts cheap. Play an iron. Yeah, see, that got hit through these blocks. And you can see, there, even though there's not a visual gap there, it's giving me an interact with dart trap. So that was the cops out here spitting towards me and doing splash damage through a non-existent gap. But the design itself is ridiculously effective. Uh, like I said, only thing left really is to test it at some multi-thousand game stage level and, and see if anything major changes when zombies take longer to die, because that's really going to be the only difference. We've seen cops, we've seen irradiated, we've seen barrels. What's going to be different is how many of those are in the horde, which will change the dynamic of how long it takes for them to die up here, basically. And as uh, seen in the earlier testing, when you get enough of a traffic jam up here, the behavior does get a little bit weird. Uh, so that's That was when we would see some damage to pillars, for example, is when they decide they can't reach up here. I don't know what she is doing over there. Being crazy. Calm it down, big mama. Either way, there you go. I would say this design uh, ridiculously effective. At this scale, ridiculously hard to build. <laughs> so not quite the same. And what I was talking about over here, in terms of having like an outer wall or an outer structure to hide your wiring, would not work here. Because this would be beyond the maximum wiring distance to go across. So it would probably work better underneath. I mean, you'd have a lot of wires visible coming up, but you could wire them so that they were straight, which is one of those pet peeves of mine. And of course, the, the wire has no physical effect. Like, these wires are not calculated on anything, and they, they can't be damaged or anything. I don't know. I mean, there are certainly ways to improve it, make it better, maybe make it look prettier, more resilient or robust. You know, get these electronics out of this air, the you know, the fighting area, because if you break them, they're very fragile, you start losing base defenses. But other than that, it I, I like the concept. Uh, I think it works great. Let me know what you think.